Chapter I My Childhood I was born in 1864 at the old house known as Sen's house which my great-grandfather built at Kaludola, a part of Calcutta where many of our family lived. My birth was always remembered in connection with a storm which occurred when I was six days old. A most important time to a Hindu baby. Or then the creator is supposed to visit the home. And write. Upon its forehead the little one's fate. Perhaps people will think the. Stormy weather in the beginning signified a stormy future for me. No girl could have been more fortunate in her parents than I. My father. The great Keshav Chunder Sen. Is considered one of the most remarkable. Men India has ever produced. And my dear mother belonged to the best type. Of Hindu woman. Gentle. Loving. And self-denying. Her whole life was. Beautiful in its goodness and its simplicity. The story of a great religious movement is not one which can be told at. Length in a book of memories. The religion for which my father suffered. And which will be forever connected with his name is the Brahmo or. Religion of the New Dispensation A religion of tolerance and charity To Quote my father's words The New Dispensation in India neither shuts out God's light from the rest of the world Nor does it run counter to any Of those marvelous dispensations of his mercy which were made manifest In ancient times It simply shows a new interpretation of his eternal Goodness. An Indian version and application of his universal love. My readers do not perhaps quite know the meaning of Brahmo. A Brahmo is a person who believes in Brahmo, one god. There is a Hindu god called Brahmuna. With four heads, Brahmo is not that god. Some Western people may think Brahmins are the same as Brahmos. Once I remember an English lady saying to me, I met some Brahmo ladies. I asked, How did you know they were Brahmos? Because they wore lace on their heads. Others have an idea that all advanced Indian ladies must be Brahmos. If my readers by some good fortune have read ancient Indian history they will know what the real Indian religion was. There was one God and no belief in caste. In fact there was no such thing as caste. Caste meant a different thing in those days. It referred to character and life. A Brahmin lived a pure and holy life and preached religion. Next to the Brahmins were the Katniyas. They were rulers, fighting people. They guarded their families, states, and countries. Then came the Sudras, who served the others. But now there are hundreds of different castes, which makes people rather narrow-minded. Or if one believes in caste one can never believe in universal brotherhood. From the days of his youth my father was earnest and devout. He must have gone through much trouble of mind before he decided to fly in the face of family tradition and take a step which meant partial separation from his nearest and dearest my mother was a member of a strict Hindu family and their marriage had been solemnist with Hindu rites but she did not fail him in the hour of trial I have often heard my mother talk of the difficulties of those days before she left Koludola with my father 
when he announced his approaching conversion. The Sen was plunged into a state of agitation. And my mother was by turns entreated and threatened by angry and dismayed relatives. Do not go against our customs, urged the Purda ladies. You are one of us. Your place is here. You must not renounce your caste. Imagine the results of such a dreadful sin. When thus reproached, the young girl dreaded the horrors of the unknown. It may be that she wavered, but if so, it was not for long, and it was arranged that she should go with my father to be converted by the Maharshi D. to goer. On the day fixed for their departure a note came. My father had written simply, I am waiting. Then my mother knew she must decide her future for good and all. All. The relations were screaming, crying, and threatening my mother, saying that she would bring disgrace on the family by leaving the house. And thus losing her caste. But it did not hinder her, because of those three simple words I am waiting the call of love. When she realized their meaning, she threw off the fetters of the past and went forth to meet her destiny. There was a round staircase used by the Purda ladies where she knew my father awaited her. The trembling girl hurriedly traversed corridors and verandas until she reached it. Fearfully she descended the dark steps, her heart beating with fright, until at last she saw my father. He said quietly, I want you to realize your position fully. If you come with me, you give up caste. Rank Money And jewels They Relations who love you will become estranged from you The bread of Bitterness will be your portion You will lose all except me Am I worth The sacrifice? My mother had had a most beautiful and wonderful vision which is too sacred for me to relate. This gave her strength and courage. She did not hesitate but descended the steps and joined my father. It was a moment too wonderful for words. They looked into each other's eyes. He read perfect faith and courage in hers. She saw in his a love which gave her confidence to face the future. They passed down the corridor and found themselves in the first courtyard opposite the great entrance, where the Durwans, gatekeepers, were standing on guard. Twice my father ordered the Durwans to open the door, but they did not move. It was very still in the courtyard. My mother was frightened. This was a strange adventure and hitherto she had hardly seen a man, except her husband, a trembling, slim girl. She stood near my father, with her headdress pulled quite low. Across the door there was a huge iron bar, which was too heavy for one man to lift. My father, Seeing that the Durwans would not open the door, went to lift the bar and did so quite easily. 
Then a voice was heard speaking from the upper floor. It was my father's eldest brother. He had watched all that had happened. And, seeing that my parents were determined, he decided to let them go. Let them pass. And open the gate. He called out to the Durwans. They, wondering Durwans threw open the door. And my parents passed from the shadows into the sunlight. My father took my mother to the beautiful house of Maharshi Dabendra. Nath Tagore. The household were all waiting to welcome them. Though they had great doubts whether my father would be able to bring my mother away from such a strict Hindu family. The Maharshi introduced my mother to his daughters as if she had been his own child. Although a rich man's daughter-in-law and a rich youth's wife, my mother was wearing a simple sari with hardly any jewels. She always spoke of the great kindness and affection she received from this family. And she deeply revered the old Maharshi. We have always felt that there is a great bond between our two families. My parents remained away for some time during which my father's formal conversion took place. After some months my grandmother and uncle begged him to return and gave him a small house near the big house. There my parents lived until my father fell seriously ill. And his eldest brother declared that in spite of all difficulties, he must come back to the old home. He came back and after long suffering and much careful nursing, grew well again. My dear old grandmother and all my aunts and uncles were very glad to have my father and mother back among them. A few months later my eldest brother was born, and the Maharshi Dabendra Nath Tagore gave him the name Karuna. The new arrangement was not without its trials. Our branch of the family had lost caste and we underwent all kinds of vexations in consequence. One great trouble was with the servants. No Hindu would wait upon us and a procession of cooks who objected to Christians, anyone who was not a Hindu in those days was called a Christian, came and went. My father's happy nature enabled him However, to rise above such discomforts. And, as he was cheerfully seconded by my mother, caste soon had no terrors for us. Our days were full of interest. And some of my earliest recollections are connected with the female education movement which my father started. There was an establishment called the ashram where his followers from all different classes lived in happy disregard of caste and class. This house was quite close to Koludola. And there I spent many happy days with my sister-in-law, then Miss Castager. The ideal of my girlhood. I remember another delightful house which a friend lent to my father for his people. It was a beautiful place with two big buildings in its grounds. In these houses the ashram people came and lived for months. And we stayed there too. I have the happiest memories of this Belguria garden house. It always seemed to me a paradise on earth. I was a little girl when I first went there. But I never smell a rose without recalling the vanished perfume of the roses in that wonderful garden. There were roses everywhere. They scattered my path with scented softness and turned their flushed or sweetly pale faces to meet my wondering eyes. 
Roses of youth, the fairest. Are any others ever so treasured? We were not allowed to pluck the fruit or flowers in the Belguria garden. And I remember seeing cards in my father's clear handwriting, fixed on the trees, which forbade us to hurt the growing loveliness. My father had indeed a striking personality, tall and broad-shouldered. He gave one the impression of great strength. I always thought of him as an immortal. His eyes were homes of silent prayer. Lord Dufferin once remarked to me, I did not know you were Mr. Sen's daughter. I've traveled far and seen many handsome men, but never one so handsome. Sir A. A. Chowd Huri's father once said, Mr. Keshub is no ordinary man. As you can tell by the perfect shape of his feet and the pink sole. And my dear husband often said, a sculptor would give anything to have your father's foot as a model. The expression of his face. People said was like that of Buddha. Calm and quiet. His voice was gentle, yet clear. And even by a large crowd every word could be distinctly heard. He had wavy hair and wonderfully white even teeth. And there was always a smile on his face.